All right, we're going to turn our attention now to revisiting exponential growth and decay. Now, you've likely looked at exponential growth and decay in previous courses. Situations like you have a uh, population here growing at a certain percentage, 3% per year, for example. Now, something to realize about that is that that obviously, when you say 3% per year, it depends on the size of the population, the actual rate that you're growing at. So if you're growing at, or if you have 100 people, you're growing at 3%, 3 people per year. Whereas if you have 100,000, well, 3% represents 3,000 people a year. So another way to look at this would be to say the rate of growth is proportional to how big the population is. Right? In this case, the rate of growth is 0 0.03 times the population. Now, if you want to use derivatives to say that, what you can say is you can say the rate of growth. So if we use P for population here, dP dt, the rate of change of population, is 3% of the population. Okay, So this is rate proportional to proportional to amount this differential equation here states that fact the rate is proportional to there's the rate and is proportional to is some is some kind of constant times the actual amount itself all right so that's what we're going to focus on here is situations like this one now this differential equation if we were going to go and solve that, we're going to see how that's going to turn out and why this is actually exponential functions revisited here. So let's try and solve that right now. We're going to, have to solve it by separating the variable. So I'm going to start right here, dp dt, just by rewriting that, 0, 3p. To separate that, we want to put the dt on the other side here. So we'll leave dp there. We'll leave the point 0, 0,3 here. And then this I'm going to divide on the other side. Like that. All right. And if you now integrate both sides, because you've managed to separate the variables, on this side we get ln absolute value of p. Because this is like integral of 1 over p. The other way you could say that is integral of 1 over p dp, right? You get ln of absolute value of p. On the other side, this is just a constant here. Integral of a constant. So it's just that constant times a variable. Now we do have to put it on one side or the other since we're integrating both sides some kind of constant. I'm just going to put a c value right there. Now this would be nice if we could solve this for p. To solve this for p, if we antilog both sides, base e, well then we're going to end up with absolute value of p on this side is e to the 0.03t plus a constant there. Now let's change the color just to keep things the same. There we go. Now since this expression can never be negative, or zero for that matter. I'm going to drop the absolute value here. We don't actually need it here. We can just say p is equal to. We don't need the absolute value. And what we got is two exponents added together here. And I'm sure you're aware from earlier math courses that that is the same as multiplying power. So I'm going to make this times e to the c instead, right? Adding two powers. Now this is just this is just a, a, a constant, right? e to the power of some constant is just a constant. Now, actually what that's going to end up being, you'll see in a second here, is um, if, we, if we look at our situation there, let's say we had the specific situation we had listed below, we had 300,000 people and it was growing at 3%. So let's say it starts at 3 300,000 people. That's at time equals zero. If I put time equals zero into here, right, like say I sub it in right there. So if I put a zero in there, uh, what do I get? The rest of this is going to be 
this whole thing is going to be e to the 0, which is 1, right? So we're going to have 1 times e to the c equals our population at the start, which was 300,000, except that's 3 million. Let's get rid of a 0. e to the c equals 300,000. This is actually the initial population. So I'm going to use the, the term p0. I'm going to use the, the variable p0 to represent that. Now I could put it over at the side here. I'm going to say let e to the c equal p0 because that's what it is. All right, initial population. So if I move down here, my solution to this is population is, so I'm going from here now, population is e to the 0 0.03t times p0, or the order you probably want to put it in when you write it out. Population is, let's try again here, make a bit more space. Population is P0E to the 0 0.03T. Now that looks a bit different than you might have used in previous math courses because the way you might have modeled this in previous math courses is not with that base E thing there. What you might have done is you might have said P equals P0 times 1.03 to the power of t. If something was growing, if it was 300,000 and growing at 3%, you might have said 300,000, 1.03 to the t. Whereas here we're saying 300,000 and we're doing e to the 0 0.03 t, if you look at it that way. All right, these two expressions, if you check your calculator, which we could do right now, If you take your calculator and go e to the power of 0 0.03, that gives you roughly 1.03. These two expressions, if you see there, these two expressions are very close to each other, right? This and this are almost the same. The difference in those two things is whether you're assuming that the 3% is a continuous growth rate or not. Populations grow continuously. Money in a bank account does not grow continuously because you wait until the end of a certain period to put the money in. You wait till the end of the year or the month before the money gets dumped in. Whereas populations, as soon as there's any new people, they're included in the population and contribute to the growth. It isn't that all the people wait till the end of the year and then the gates opened up and they all walk in and join the population. They're continuously being added. So often when you work with situations involving continuous growth, this base E model is a better model. And, um, and you can use it just the same way. You know, you have a time here, you have a population, you have the value over there, sub one number in, you can work out the other. You can graph the function. Everything the same, it's just that that little bit of a difference and this came from, remember, our differential equation that we started with where we had the rate of growth of that population is proportional to the population itself. The bigger the population, the bigger the rate of change. Just some constant times that. Now you might say, what if the population was declining? If this population was declining at 3%, well, let's think about how that would be different here. The difference would have been that we would have started here, we would have said something like the rate of change of the population is if it's going down at 3%, okay, if we were going down at 3%, well we could have said the rate of change is negative 0 0.03 times the population. If we went and solved that, what we would end up with is population is P0 e to the negative 0 0.03t. You would have got exactly the same equation, but this this uh, k factor up here, this value, would have been negative instead of positive. If you check what that's equal to on your calculator, you'll see something again here that uh, hopefully helps make the connection here. If you do e Oops, that's not an E. Let's try again. E to the power of negative 0 0.03. You get roughly 0.97. Now that's probably how you would have modeled it in the past, right? If you had something declining instead of this, if you had something declining at, th at 3%, you would have said 
100% minus 3% here, right? And we just saw that that is roughly what e to the negative 0 0.03 is, right? Those are roughly the same. So when you have growth, you have a positive k factor there. When you have decay, you have a negative k factor there. All right, so let's kind of summarize this. We'll go back down to the bottom of my handout here. Now I wrote, uh, I used that above situation and <laughs> wrote off the page, but you could write out a nice solution for yourself for that basic situation. It's the same thing, just A for amount instead of P for population, and use that space right there. I'm going to go down to this box at the bottom here, put in kind of a summary of this. We have this situation where we have the rate of change is proportional to the quantity itself. And we found that when we had that situation, that differential equation like that, where you have rate proportional to quantity, you get this, the solution to that being, and this should be a, a y here, because that's the variable we're using, what we're starting with, y is equal to y0 e to the kt, where k is the, the rate constant, okay, called the rate constant. In the situation we looked at there, it was 3%, the, the constant of proportionality. And you need to know that when k is greater than zero, it represents growth. And when k is less than zero, it represents decay. All right? That is what they call the law of exponential change. All right? This law of exponential change, starting with the differential equation and coming up with that solution. All right? That's it.